Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I want to talk to you about uh, the verification of the Quran as opposed to the verification of the New Testament. And uh, one of the things that Muslims will say is that, excuse me, the Bible is not the Word of God because it doesn't attest to it. The Gospels don't attest or say that they are the Word of God. So how can they be the Word of God? Uh, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com uh, You can get me on Facebook and you can get me on Twitter. Now I'm going to read to you uh, Sam Shimon's An Opening Letter to Muslims. Okay, Sam Shimon, The Anonymous Quran. And it's in two parts. We can't read all of it, but here the second part is Weighty Tomb on textual variants in the Quran. Very, very weighty, lots of material there, very well researched. I encourage you as a Muslim to read it. I'm just going to read the first part of the title uh, Another Challenge to Muslims The Anonymous Quran Sam Shamal. You can get this on Answering Islam. I'm just going to read, read some of it and see where we go. He goes, literal critical scholarship pretty much accepts the canonical gospels are all first century accounts. The following are approximate dates and the, that the consensus of liberal New Testament scholarship is signed in the four New Testament gospels. Mark 65 to 75 AD, Matthew 75 90 AD, Luke Acts 1895 AD, John 9100 AD. However, this very simple, same liberal critical scholarship argues that the Gospels are essentially anonymous works which were not written by eyewitnesses of Christ. Scott, such scholarship would further discount the testimony of the early church regarding the authorship of these Gospels, calling into question the testimonies concerning the authorship of the New Testament Gospels from such Christians such as Papias in 110 to 140 AD, a hearer of the Apostles and Disciples of Christ, or Irenaeus, 180 AD, a secondary century apologist, who heard from Polycarp, a disciple of the Apostle John. Thus, testimonies of men writing not long after the death of the Apostles are ignored, are brushed aside for no apparent reason than such witnesses throw a monkey wrench into the presuppositions of critical scholars who have already made up their minds concerning the origin and com composition of the canonical Gospels. I just want to say here, well, we'll just see what he writes here. Yet what makes this far rather unfortunate is that Muslim polemicists have jumped on the liberal bandwagon in order to discredit the witness of the New Testament. We say it is unfortunate because these down dawn dawa ganis, I think, never bothered to follow through with their assumptions of such critical scholarship to see how this would affect their Islamic beliefs concerning the origin and composition of the Quran. In the tradition of trying to keep these Islamic protagonists consistent and honest, we are going to take the same critical approach to the Gospels and apply that to their own scripture and ask them some far rather uncomfortable questions. However, we are not that naive to think that the Dawarists in question will answer with any consistency or honesty. In the light of their track record, we expect that they will skirt the issue and make up all kinds of excuses. With the ongoing perspective, we now issue the following challenge to Muslims. Just, just, just uh, before we read the challenge, uh, I think it's important to remember as a Muslim, very often as a Muslim, what you'll do, uh, especially the Muslim apologists, what they'll do is they'll grab uh, critical scholars like Bart Ehrman and take material from uh, someone like him and then they will use that and attack the Bible. But they'll not allow you to use that same critical scholarship on the Quran. So you have a double standard there as Muslims. 
and also you're cherry picking because many of these critical scholars would not agree with certain aspects of the Quran and certain te historical teachings of the Quran. For example, the Quran says Jesus di didn't die. Any critical scholarship that you would take to attack the Bible would never agree to you saying that the Jesus did not die on a cross. Okay? So, that's the first point. Second point is, um, critical scholarship is, is very often biased and there are presuppositions that influence critical scholarship. So it's in the interest of liberal scholars to discount the importance of eyewitnesses, but recent research is gathering pace more and more, confirming that there is eyewitness material within the Gospels. All right, Richard Balcom is one example, Burridge is another example, but there are many other scholars that are beginning to see the importance of those arguments. So here's, let's get the challenge now. Our first challenge to the, to the polemicist is to provide a quote from a reliable source written within 100 years after Muhammad's death, 633 AD, which expressively and unanimously says that the Quran consists of 114 chapters, no more, no less. That's a powerful challenge. We further challenge them to cite a reference from this early period that clearly says that all of the 114 surahs were transmitted through Muhammad. We want the Muslim polemicists to provide conclusive historical proof that other messengers or prophets whose names are not mentioned in the Quran did not compose some of these surahs. The name Muhammad appears only four times in the Quran and Muhammad is no more than apostle. The apostles have already passed away before him. If when he dies or is killed, when you turn back upon your heels and whoever turns back upon his heels, he will by no means do harm to Allah in the least and Allah will reward the grateful. Surah 3144 Muhammad is not the father of any of your men but he is the apostle of Allah and the last of the prophets and Allah is conjacent of all things. Surah 3340 And as for those who believe and do good and believe in what has been revealed to Muhammad and it is the very truth for the Lord, he will remove the evil from them and improve the condition. Surah 47, 2. two. Muhammad is the apostle of Allah. And those with him are firm of heart. And the unbelievers compassionate among themselves. You will see them bow down, prostrating themselves, seeking grace from Allah, pleasuring, pleasure. Their marks are in their faces because of the effect of prostration. That is their description in the Torah and their description in the Injil. Like a seed produced that puts forth its sprout, then strengthens it, so it becomes stout and stands firmly on its stem, delighting the sowers that he may enrage the unbelievers. On account of them, Allah has promised those among them who believe and do good forgiveness and a great reward, Surah 48, 29. So, Simone says, Thus one can argue that these particular sorrows were transmitted through a man named Muhammad, However, this cannot be said of the entire Quran, since there are only chapters that mention, sorry, thus one can argue that these particular surahs were transmitted through a man named Muhammad. However, this cannot be said of the entire Quran, since these are the only chapters that mention his name. So the burden of proof is on the Muslim to provide early reliable testimony that the entire Quran that they currently possess was possessed, passed on by Muhammad himself. Moreover, there are several chapters where neither Allah nor Muhammad is ever mentioned. Surah 101, verse 1 to 11. The clatterer, what is the clatterer? What shall teach thee? What is the clatterer? The day that men shall be like scattered moths, and the mountain shall be like plucked wool tufts. Then he whose deeds weigh heavy in the balance shall inherit the passing of life. But he whose deeds weigh light in the balance shall plunge in the womb of the pit. And what shall teach thee? What is the pit? A blazing fire. Gross rivalry, Surah 1 2. Verse 1 to 8. Gross rivalry divert you even till you visit the tomb, nor indeed but soon you shall know, and again, nor indeed but soon you shall know, 
No, indeed, did you know with the knowledge of certainty you shall surely see hell. Again, you shall surely see it with the eye of certainty. Then you shall be questioned that day concerning your bliss. By afternoon, surely man is in the way of loss, save those who believe and do righteous deeds and counsels each one under the truth and counsel each other to be steadfast. 103, verse 1 to 3. Surah 103, 1 to 3. Hast thou seen him who cries like a doom? That is, he who repulses the orphan and urges not the feeding of the needy. So woe to those that pay are heedless of their prayers, pray and are heedless of their prayers to those who make display and refuse charity. Surah 107, 18. Surah 111, verse 1 to 5. Perish the hands of Abu Laba, and perish he, his wealth avails him not, neither what he has earned. He shall roast as a flaming fire, and his wife, the carry of the firewood upon her neck as a rope of palm fibre. Simon says, in the light of this, how do Muslims know for certain that these chapters are inspired or part of the Muslim scripture, when they do not mention the name of the Islamic deity or Muhammad? After all, the texts themselves don't claim to be God's revelation, so why should we assume that they are? Are Muslims of capable of sourcing a reliable written document composed within 100 years after Muhammad's death by a follower of Muhammad's companion to prove that their prophet personally transmitted these specific surahs as revelations that form, form part of his scripture. Appealing to the Hadith collection or the Sanat chain of transmission won't work for several reasons. First, in the case of Irenaeus, we have a reliable and broken chain of transmission that goes way back, all the way back, to John, who was an eye and, and, and witness of Christ. Yet Muslims still discount this testimony, which means that the chains of transmission really do not hold any weight, for, any weight for them, unless, of course, it serves the purposes of defending Islam. So then, why should we accept their chain of transmitters, especially when these chains were only compiled centuries after the death of Muhammad? This leads us to the second problem, the hadiths that Muslims often appeal to were written over 200 years after the reported death of Muhammad. <coughs> collection during the 3rd century, the hadith was collected and categorized in the later part of the 3rd century of the Hijra, resulting in six can canonical collections, al Shayya al Sitta, Sayyid Bukhari 256 AH. Two thousand seven hundred twelve non duplicated out of six hundred thousand. Sayyid Muslim two six one AH four thousand non duplicated out of three hundred thousand. Sunnah Ab Dawood two seven six H four thousand eight hundred out of five hundred thousand. Sunnah Ibn Majah two seven Jami Timaradi two seven nine and Sunnah of Al Nasi 303. The number of the Shia transmitters of hadith quoted in the Al Shayi Al Sitta is over 300. Al Bukhari and Al. The Al Bukhari of Shia Al Bukhari 194 256. Collected the hadith over a period of many years, having established certain strict criteria, political times were very troublesome, especially against al Bayata during the al Mutawiki rulership. Therefore, Bukhari was circumspect, having mentioned less about al Bayat's narration than others of the al Shahi and al Sitta. Of the 2,210 hadiths claimed to have been narrated from Aisha, Bukhari and Muslim accepted only 174 as genuine according to the criteria. Muslim of Sal Muslim 204, he said he was a student of al Bukhari and eight years younger. He differed from Bukhari in his methodology and criteria. He collected the hadith over a number of years 
having established his own criteria, political times were less troublesome against al Bayad after al Mutawi was killed by his own son. Therefore, Muslim narrated a large number of hadiths about al Bayad. Al Nasadi of Sa um, al Nasir 215 to 303 H, good hadith collection, more credible, he wrote al Kasi's book about the eminence of Ali and Abu al Bayat and the hadith about him. So basically, what Sam Simon is saying is is that these hadiths are political productions, they were edited and they're not really reliable and they're primarily and principally late so historical sources and when you compare that to the New Testament uh, and to the attestation with Irenaeus and the others there's a big difference uh, Irenaeus and the others are closer to, G uh, to the Apostles and we have a, a better chain of narration there but also we there's no political shenanigans going on of editing and taking material out and leaving material which these later hadith writers uh, have done so again you know as muslims you can't compare christianity to islam here all right you need to really think this through let's read a verse And John, verse 32, And John bore a record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending upon heaven, like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaineth the same, is he who baptizeth with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bore a record that this is the Son of God, so John the Baptist, a prophet, sorry I've got an itchy nose. John the Baptist, a prophet, saw Jesus and said, here is the Son of God. And I would ask you Muslims to believe Jesus as your Saviour, as the Son of God, who came down from heaven to die on a cross for you, give his life for you. When you're criticising the Bible, make sure that you use fair criteria, because when you use liberal and critical scholarship, be careful because if that same critical scholarship is turned upon you, then you're going to be in trouble in verifying your faith. God bless you and thank you for listening.